I feel like you need to. Uh, you should probably use stools, right? Because it's a round table. You want a round chair too. Yeah, uh, it would just it would just yeah. clash, yeah. or just like yeah. or just ottomans, right? Just like a you nice could use those. Cushion. Like maybe maybe every knight had one of those like rotating circular beds from the seventies. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> As I would spin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boys here, uh, defending Britannia from the Saxons, now that the Romans have buggered off. Uh, I am your Lady of the Lake, Peter O'Donohue, and I was prophesied to return with... Tis I, the noble knight Ethan, I have brought my trusty rapier with me. And James Miller the Frog, ribbit. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of uh, Lady of the Lake. <laughs> yeah, it's just a female frog. <laughs> the, the, the fluoride hasn't gotten to and made her gay Not yet. yet. <laughs> Peter, uh, it's female French woman. Come on. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Downloads plummet in France. Oh fuck me. Oh man. yeah, yeah. We, we had did a, it. We had a big listenership there. Yeah, in Paris. Yeah. So today's episode, I think, is an organic request. Uh, but it may have also been like the Monster Hunter Black Dragons episode where I like incepted it into people's minds just to get them to do something to like ask for something I wanted to do already. Sure, um, sure. All the while, like, while I, like, gazed out at my empire of Discord. Uh, if you want mm -hmm. to, the best way to do requests uh, and have them sum summarily completely ignored for months and months and months is to loreboys.com slash about and jump in that Discord. So, um, yeah. that being said, uh, I had appeared apparently in the uh, dreams of Han Dolo and Ocrest, who is a patron of ours over on Discord. And today's episode, as you can see, is about King Arthur. Um, and I would also like to welcome and say hello and thank you to our newest patron, uh, Race Rizel. Uh So, hello and thanks. Hey, Race. Uh, Lads. Lads. I'm surprised that you got you weren't the first patron here, Race. I'm not going to lie. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you finished like 28th overall or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 uh, at least he's trying right it's, oh, yeah. come on get 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 in there oh, yeah. um so i guess i'll start with you jamie for no real reason other than that you're at the bottom of my camera stack in discord right now mm -hmm. uh what's your familiarity with king arthur i have like a childhood memory of an animated movie i want to say where there's like a merlin who turns another wizard into a frog uh there's a guy who pulls a sword from a stone. Uh, there's Knights of the Round Table. Um, Camelot, the Disney movie, maybe? <laughs> I, I can pull it up. Yeah. Is that oh, yeah, Cam Camelot would be Prince uh, King Arthur, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, that, uh, so there is a Disney film called The Sword and the Stone. The Sword and the Stone, that's what it is. I think I had that VHS in my, like, my uh, CRG TV that had the VHS built in with like the 12 inch screen uh, yeah and i'm pretty sure i used to watch that in my room uh i used to hair. love that movie yeah um ethan uh never seen sword in the stone i'm familiar with the myth and a bit about the real guy um fought the saxons in britain for the romans as a native britain i believe at the wall which divided the island i guess um, oh, that's that wall that they built. That's Hadrian's Wall, which Hadrian's like divides wall, Scotland and England or something like that. Right? Something like that, yeah. Uh, like it's like the north and the south. Um, he had his. It's like the Round Table, which is probably a probably myth. Uh, his knights, which were probably true. There's uh, Lancelot the Brave, Gallagher the Pure, and then Galahad. <laughs> Galahad, yeah. Gall uh, Gallagher, Gallagher, is a of a McDonald's burger. Okay, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> There was a uh, Gallagher, Gallagher, the uh, watermelon smasher. Uh, yeah. His weapon, <laughs> um, Bryson, the gnarly. Yeah. Um, there's like, we got? <laughs> there's, there's a couple, like there's inconsistencies, I guess, that are in my head. And I don't know if exist in the, the Arthur canon where like, there's obviously the lady in the lake who apparently bestows upon him Excalibur, but then like Jamie says, there's also like the sword in the stone myth, which he whoever draws the sword from the stone shall be crowned king of England. Um, I don't know if those are like, those happen at different times or like the lady of the lake gives it to him and then he loses it in a, in a stone and pulls it back out or something. Hmm. Um, Jamie also says mentions Merlin, who's included in the myths. I, I remember the, uh, 
was it Clive Owen in like the 2004 live action film King Arthur was probably like my first exposure to it because I never saw the animated one. But I know I know a bit about it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's it's good. It's it's <laughs> if if anybody had listened to this and thought like all this was like totally fake, a lot of the stuff you mentioned definitely just know Ethan is just like no. Pete sent his scripts in advance. Clearly, because I will <laughs> il- elucidate basically every single thing that you just talked about because this is very much like the early early Arthurian legend. I used uh, actually for one of the first times I used a website that wasn't just wiki blank. Um, okay. I actually went on Encyclopedia Britannica for the historicity or historicity, whatever the like validity of the stories are wow. uh, for the Arthurian story. So I think it would um, just be historical authenticity. So it, the they, there was a, uh, the, yeah, the, <laughs> they used a specific term, which was like historicity or historicity. Are you thinking of hysterectomy? Wants- uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about when King Arthur had his uterus removed. Exactly. <laughs> Historicity. Uh, Historical authenticity. There yeah, go. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might just be like a portmanteau. Find me the, the etymology of the historicity of the historicity, please. If you could yeah. oh my pull, God. That, pull that clip up. Uh, so um, I only had like kind of passing knowledge about uh, King Arthur, but I have seen The Sword in the Stone. It was one of my favorite like Disney VHSs that I had growing up. Um, I also watched a CBC show called Dragon Booster. Uh, if anybody ever saw that, um, <laughs> that sounds and, like a cartoon where they're trying to sell trading cards or Beyblades or something with it, you know? Yo, actually, I have an aside about Dragon Booster in here because I used to love that show, and yeah. like Dara uh, has the intro completely memorized, and I tr- she sent me audio clips on 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 uh, or via like. Um, iMessage that I tried to pull and like give to you guys so we could cut it into the episode of her just like saying the entire intro which like describes the lore of the show uh, but I couldn't figure out how to do it properly because I am a big dumb idiot. That's true. Um, I always said the it. Un- I always said it. it it's, it's part of our brand. Lore Boys, lore boys <laughs> Industries is a copyright of Pete Big Dumb Idiot LTV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our, <laughs> our, 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 our historicity isn't great or something like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys ever think I'll... about the fact that portmanteau is just a portmanteau of door coat? Yep, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> why would you want a door coat? Well, why would door coat mean two words smushed together? Like, why would that be the word that means words that are smushed together? Was it just the first one that they ever did? And we're like, yeah, we'll call every other word that does this. But what that. would a door coat even be? Is that like your house coat? Like, whenever you close the door to your home, then you put on your house coat? Or, like, why would a door need a coat? Well, like, a house coat would be like it, it, by that logic of just like putting the two French words together. Like it would be maison manteau. I know, but the, we're, we're working <laughs> backwards. We're working backwards from portmanteau. So, we, yeah. What, what would it be then, Mister Bright Ideas? Yeah, I come if, on, Pete, Mister Disparaging like, Jamie's ideas. <laughs> portmanteau. It, do they mean like uh like a seaport or something like that? Well, it's spelled with an e, so I don't think so. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's oh. por- portmanteau. Porte- oh, oh portemento, I see. Oh, uh, it's when you take a door off the hinges, it gets quite cold, so you put on a little jacket for it. Yeah. yeah. What would what would, say- your th- what would your theory be if it was like a ship port uh, coat? <laughs> I, like, I, it, it for me, it's at least closer than a door. But I wanted to say that like <laughs> por- portemento sounds like a cheese as well. It does, yeah, or like an yeah. Italian meat. Like that's a, a good meat. guess for yeah. France too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. Uh, another really quick thing about uh, uh, King Arthur here is uh, when I had a drama teacher in high school who sadly had a, had a miscarriage, so she took the school year off. Um, and the theater nerds and I all still wanted to do a play. So uh, this guy w- who was in the grade above me named Evan Harkai, uh, shout out to him because he's like okay. working or was working in showbiz in Toronto afterwards. Uh, just transcribed the entire script of Monty Python and a Holy uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail, and we just did a completely illegal, unlicensed stage adaptation of the film. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was uh, Sir Bedivere, so I used a old maple syrup bucket and used a hacksaw to cut out a little square, so that I always had the visor that I could hold up the entire time, which was like his visual gag in the yeah. uh, in the film. <laughs> Um, yeah, so a quick aside about Dragon Booster as well, because I know you mentioned it sounds like something that would want to sell merch. It was very much like Canada's version of Beyblade or Bakugan, because it was like 
kind of like a sci-fi future where teenagers would race dragons against each other. Um, but it wasn't particularly successful, which is why we have like Pokemon Brilliant Diamond instead of anything related to Dragon Booster at all. It's just it wasn't super popular. It had like three seasons and then was like canceled unceremoniously. Sounds. I, cool. I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah cool. there you go. Uh, it was like CBC cartoon in the morning, basically. Okay, you got it on your yeah. antenna TV, and you could just see yeah. dragons scrolling up past over and over again through the static. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it. <laughs> So, King Arthur Pendragon is probably not a real person. Most historians at time of writing agree that he's probably an amalgamation of multiple men. He is like, a... Like yeah. a lot of great people from history, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, oh, we know somebody did this. We know this guy was alive at the time. So let's just accredit it to him. Like Shakespeare, right? Yeah. Like they're, they don't know that Shakespeare wrote every play that's accredited to Shakespeare. In a thousand yeah. years, they'll think that there was only one lore boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, called King Arthur. It's just like, no, yeah, King yeah. Arthur was, was a podcaster. He talked about Magic yeah. the Gathering, idiot. Come on. Like, it's clearly called real. Arthur Peen Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur Peen Jamie would be uh, oh. the actual, like, the complete uh, assembly. Until some historian, like, is mining through a rock and finds, like, an old iPod or something and then was able to, like, listen to us and find out it's three. and Yeah, it's, a, it's an iPod <laughs> shuffle. It's like, still works. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the Baghdad battery. He, like, hooks it up to, like, a like copper and lemon juice and gets, oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah, the men of the past were very, <laughs> were very crafty. Yeah. Very industrious. Yeah. Um, so Arthur had apparently been mentioned in various accounts uh, and stories for at least a couple of centuries, but his first, like, confirmed drop was in 829 A.D., uh, where he is said to be a military leader of some description who participated in the Battle of Baden, uh, and also called the Battle of Mons Badanicus in Old Italian and probably like Warhammer 40k. Because Mons Badanicus. Mons like that. Badanicus. Is that on the sound... vagina? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where on the vagina is the Badanicus? <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's a Mons pubis, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Isn't there? I, I think Mons just means like hill. It's Mount, right? I think, yeah. Or Mount, yeah. yeah. The pelvic Mons pubis, I think, is part of like the is like part of your pelvic bone, or maybe women just have it. I have no fucking idea. Pelvic mouth yeah, sounds like I'm the not front, a skeleton. It's the front doctor. of your pelvis, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm not a skeleton doctor, guys. So don't now, I looked the... up <laughs> Mons. I looked up what Mons means, and I it just the definition is short for Mons pubis. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the, who's the casual person who's talking about uh, check out Mamans, you know? Like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my my favorite part, my favorite part of the woman's body, it's the is the Mons. <laughs> the front of the skeleton. <laughs> Uh, so the Battle of Baden was originally made famous for stopping the, the Saxons from getting further into Britain, uh, but it's actually more famous now for the involvement of King Arthur, which kind of is like if Forrest Gump made Vietnam more more like more famous, because it's like a very clearly fictional person was like allegedly at this fight, and that's the thing that boosts the signal of this war, which like really is like a war of some consequence where it stopped the Saxons from further getting into Britain. Yeah. Yeah. Who were the Saxons? Um, the uh, I, ugh, the I have no idea. Norse, no? Like weren't they Vikings? Who were the like, I'm pretty sure pretty sure it's like, like the Vikings. Anglo Saxons. Who were the Saxons? Like short for Mons Pubis. You're like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> <It's useless." laughs> yeah. The oh, Sax Pubis. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Saxons are actually Germans. Oh, okay. So oh well, yeah, like Germans den like near the border of Denmark, basically, but yeah. So like what Anglo Saxon is just like English and well, German the, roots? Well they well, didn't the Anglo yeah. So the Angles come from north of Saxony, like close to Denmark, and it was like the migration which created like the the modern day English essentially. Wow. Uh, and then meeting with like the Romans in Britain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. That I that's all all those just a handy guide here. All those historical events led up to these uh, soccer hooligans eating fish and chips and drinking beer and saying in it, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In it, mate. The, ate the Romans, ate the Saxons, simple as. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so people who are about as qualified as we are speculate that the ingredients to make a King Arthur, or at least the Arthurian legends, are a pinch of Artuir Mac Aiden, uh, two teaspoons of Rio Thomas, Ambrosius Aurelianus Zest, and then Lucius Artorius to taste. Who are the but, three... oh no, then he, then he smashed a vial of Chemical X. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and the, the Powerpuff Kings were born, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he mixed up the ingredients and King Arthur's stuck in the stone. Fuck. <laughs> the, power, the, Powerpuff Kings, the Powerpuff Kings will be a great name if we ever decide to do a Powerpuff rewatch uh, podcast. Like so, okay. solo feet, right? Yeah. Call ourselves yeah. the Powerpuff Kings. We were, we're talking about Patreon exclusive. Yeah, yeah. we we're talking about some premium the Powerpuff options. Kings. That sounds good, man. <laughs> uh. So if you put all those guys uh, that I just mentioned on the stove for about 600 years, and then your name is Jeffrey of Monmouth, uh, then you've got yourself a King Arthur. What was the um, Ambrosia name? Because that name sounded very beautiful. Uh, Ambrosius Aurelianus. Oh, I like that. That guy sounds really <laughs> smooth. He's like the Dionysus of the group. I've been playing a lot of Hades. I bet you he gets drunk and he, 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 and he fucks. You think Ambrosius gets pussy? He's, uh, he fucks. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Gets, gets a little bit of Mons. Gets a little, little bit of Mons Saxony or whatever the fuck the part of the skeleton is. <laughs> I mean, Ambrosia in like modern day English means like it's like fasting, right? Like, that's it. I, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I just I, now I'm like wondering like. What was Ambrosia in ancient Greek? I've just the, like I've just sent Ethan on like a is fifteen it, minute is Google it? quest. At I know. Point. Yeah. <laughs> is it Ambrosia <laughs> like, like <laughs> Isn't it like a nectar of the gods or something? Yeah. So yeah. Ambrosia and nectar was the food and drink of the gods, and in modern day English, the according to the Collins Dictionary, it's the Ambrosia is the practice of refraining from eating. Mm. So I wonder if that's because like gods don't need to eat; they do it for pleasure. In right. Hades, it's like the like you have to give like the wine bottles or the ne nectar to get your first yeah. level friendship, and then like your uber friendship, you have to give the ambrosia over. That's like the okay. right, right, that's like yeah. the sick food. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah, it's food of the gods uh, in ancient Greece. It's yeah. not eating in modern day. I guess we're not gods, right? Not yet. Depends on the ask, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Geoffrey of Monmouth was a Welsh cleric born at some point in the early 12th century, kind of in and around Monmouth, uh, which is in eastern Wales. Uh, of course, with like kind of the quality and the amount of people who knew how to write in, you know, 11th or 12th century Wales, it's really unclear. But he referred to himself as Geoffrey of Monmouth, so that's like people tend to associate him with either being, you know, liking the area or just being from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, he's best. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. he's uh, everyone's from Mon something because you're born from your mother, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, everybody comes passes the Mons the the Mons pubis at some point. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mon, you can just call Mon it the Mons. Mons. We're all friends here. Yeah. Just call it the Mons. We're all friends here. Just yeah, call it Mons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he'd be so formal, Pete. Come on. Whoa, whoa, you, doctor. Who, who invited this nerd? <laughs> Do you think that's what uh, all those Jamaican people are talking about? Your Mons pubis. Hey, Mons. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying oi cunt like yeah. <laughs> uh, so Jeffrey is best known for uh, for writing the history of the kings of Britain which is where Arthur is first said to have been king of the Britons in the distant past so like official writing of official right in quotes writing about King Arthur only came up like 600 years after he allegedly lived like history so often is just collaborative fan fiction. Like it's yes. just a bunch of historians getting together and being like, let's make the funnest story for everybody to teach in their classes. And then yeah. like some of it, like especially like archaeological driven history and things like that, like they can find pottery shards and they can find the Baghdad battery and they can speculate on it. Um, but like when it's when you're talking about like people and what they did and even like usually what they wore or like what they ate, it's just like impossible to know. You know, yeah, we like, talked about this off air, but like how the humans got to uh, like the western part of the world, and yeah. like there was a theory that they came over in the south, and and we were talking about how, yeah how like the white man would want to destroy that because it would not mean the white man got here first yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And, yeah. I think I think we said it, it's believable because we know that if it were true, and we we haven't heard it, we hadn't heard of it, but if it were true, the white man at some point would have tried to suppress it, so that just makes it feel more true that we haven't yeah. heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, also, the history of the kings of Britain is also the first mention of King Lear, which is inter interesting that you mentioned Shakespeare earlier. So he Whoa. is also fake and was made up by Geoffrey of Monmouth. Is that the, the blind guy? Century. I, I, now I'm blind, no. I can see. No. That's uh, Oedipus, I think. is who, who Well, Oedipus is mom, one. Pokes but... his eyes out. Oedipus, Oedipus pokes both his eyes out. I think King Lear does go blind at some point. Does there... he? I, I've not read it. So, I That was one of the ones I read in, in high school. I remember a guy going blind and now he can see. And that's the big irony. Like, I'm 15 and this is deep. Well, actually was 15 <laughs> and it was deep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he he's blind, but he's like um, he he like is blind, like literally as a metaphor, basically, where he like he doesn't want to see the truth, so Shakespeare has him like literally go blind from it. Okay, and then he okay. can see, and like someone brings him through the desert or something, but Lear's the one who actually can see, and not the guy who's guiding him. And there's a bunch of yeah. ironies and stuff. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, classic Shakespeare and his dramatic ironies. Am I and right? Speaking of which, Shakespeare probably not one guy, huh? Is that what we said earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's Je Jeffrey of Monmouth, or um, a as the conspiracy goes, that he was completely invented by Sir Francis Bacon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so on, on the subject of another author here, uh, Jeffrey's writings were a central part of another piece of famous medieval literature called The Matter of Britain, uh, which was a collection of writing that had kind of attempted to create a legendary history of Britain. There are actually three matters, which are um, three states of matter, which are the matter of France, <laughs> the matter of Rome, and the matter of Britain. Okay. And They're plasma. Like, yeah, just, yeah, gas is Britain. <laughs> yeah, gas is Britain. <laughs> liquid France. Uh, like liquid, fr liquid Britain, solid Britain, plasma Britain, and uh, eyes eyes or Bose Einstein condensate Britain, I guess. <laughs> yeah, would be the yeah. fifth one. <laughs> exactly um yeah so these are the three kind of these are three big big me medieval literatures um matter of france actually talks about charlemagne a lot uh who is real uh opposed to like romulus and remus for matter of rome or king arthur in this case king arthur and king lear who are very clearly made up by a cleric a welsh cleric basically okay at least in some it depends on who you ask of course if you ask a welsh cleric he might tell you king arthur hundo p real um although the kind of uh, validity of King Arthur being a real person was considered to be kind of less and less trustworthy, even by the 16th century, because claims started to roll in that he had single-handedly killed 900 men or over 900 men at the Battle of Baden. And which there was pretty happen. much like, yeah, exactly, which is like <laughs> even like dumb, dumb, like like dark age scholars were just like i don't think that's true because like <laughs> if even you, if he had if, god on his side i don't think so you know yeah like <laughs> if you think about it like i don't know like what the size of a, a saxon army would be at this point in the 600s but let's say if, if they brought something insane like ten thousand men king arthur would have had to have killed nine percent of them himself and yeah, like yeah. a, a, t a ten thousand man army is a lot of people. It's huge. But yeah. maybe yeah. they used to do war. Like you know how like they used to line up with their like single shot muskets, and everybody gets one shot. And then whoever falls down, you step into their place. Yeah, yeah but not, in the, not in the six forties. Like the, <laughs> Europe, Europe had not made like Chinese contact to get. I think Jamie's no, saying, what if they did so. it with swords? Yeah. What if what if it was like, it's a series black. of duels, a series of duels, and this guy again it was good. Like the the Green Knight, right? That was that was. His thing was he he dueled like a hundred men for his maidens his fair maiden's hand or something. Mm -hmm. um, I've only seen the movie, which is very weird but very cool that came out recently. Oh sure, yeah, I'd, yeah, not familiar with the movie. I think that's like the Legend of the Green Knight. But um, yeah, I mean, ten thousand is a huge army and historical battles like they never ended with one side getting wiped out. <laughs> like usually no. you lose. 10% of your forces and people would be like, all right, fuck this. Let's go. You yeah, know, like, that's enough yeah. peasants. Yeah. So we're talking like, even for him to have, have killed that many people, like you need like a hundred thousand person army before they're just yeah. like one guy has killed. How many of us? We got to go. We got to <laughs> go. Guys. Like, <laughs> I think he did it. I believe. Okay. Yeah. No. All right. All right. Well, yeah, I, I mean, so. it, again, it's totally harmless to believe in King Arthur unless, uh, you know, it, it, just just don't go any deeper down the rabbit hole, Jamie. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> this is Jamie. Jamie's king and on conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dragon pilled. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, re regardless of your, your pillable status here, uh, King Arthur has remained as one of the most famous legendary figures in uh, like culturally in our part of the world, or at least in our part mm -hmm. of the world's culture, I guess, which is Western TM, basically. Yeah. 
Um, um, even being included, he was even included in something called the Nine Worthies, which was a 13th century carving, which is currently in Cologne, Germany, which is like a very early analog to like a coexist sticker of the time because okay. the nine worthies it features three pagans three jews and three christians all as like the the greatest heroes of their of their particular canons again uh king arthur is there for the christians along with charlemagne who is real again so it's like it is basically <laughs> if, if you if you got your like nine worthies right now you'd have like some real guy and fucking shadow the hedgehog and just yeah. like, oh, man. <laughs> like, the greatest the, the greatest heroes of her yeah. in actual, history right now like, actual like war an actual hero. doctor yeah. Yeah. yeah actual war hero duke nukem and sonic the hedgehog it's like yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. we'd have like we'd have like yeah. tommy douglas who is like kind of responsible for getting free health care to canada and then also i don't know uh the friendly giant from cbc yeah, yeah. <laughs> sherlock holmes and indiana jones and uh, all these people yeah. are real by the way but yeah, of course. Yeah, well, it's a uh, the Indiana Jones is again an amalgamation of uh, Ambrosius Aurelianus and uh, some real <laughs> nerd who worked in the uh, universe. Yeah, <laughs> name an actual yeah. ar- uh, archaeologist, can you? You can't even name the profession. That's how unreal. Yeah. <laughs> I almost said architect. <laughs> I almost said architect, and I was like, no, yeah. not architect. It's ar- archaeohistoricity. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's whenever they so- fix the arch in your foot. Yeah. <laughs> so this is funny because i had mentioned like shadow the hedgehog just now um my favorite adaptation of the king arthur legend is actually sonic and the black knight i completely freaking forgot about this because i wrote what? this like 10 days ago uh yeah. the arthurian adaptation sonic and the black knight on wii reveals that sonic the hedgehog is actually king arthur oh hell yeah dude <laughs> All right. i love i Oh, I, I tried to type Sonic in the Black Knight to see what the fuck you were talking about, and apparently I wrote Arthur in the Black Knight. And I was like, why does it bring me just to the Wikipedia page for King Arthur? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this Wii game looks pretty sick, though. It features Sonic with a big Zweihander. Uh, ready to fucking go to war here. Yeah. Ready to kill 900 pagan Saxons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's out of out of fashion to be a Sonic fan, so I'm just gonna stop consuming all content. I feel like <laughs> like like the weirdest internet folks are the big Sonic fans. But... Oh yeah. yeah, you know I wonder what happened. Like I would love a deep dive um, one day on like that like you frickin' fricks kid who would scream about um, <laughs> when will your Sonic fantasies like... ever be quenched? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder. I wonder if he ever made it to the big leagues of Tosh point oh, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I looked into him like a year ago or something, and he's still like he he's posted videos. He's just a grown up kid now. Uh, yeah, look him up, but does Anyways. he still have his Sonic backpack on? But like it's he's it's like he's never taken it off. He's got like calluses on his shoulders because he's been wearing it for so long. Yeah, he's right yeah. though. In that in that rant, he's 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 lashing out uh, uh, at the Sonic fandom where there really is problems. So the kid he knew what was up. But... Yeah, way ahead of his time. Yeah. Jeffrey Monmouth of the fandom, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now that we've got all the kind of like real world nerd shit out of the way, we can get to the good part, which are like the myths and lore behind Arthur himself, which is the stuff that we're all very familiar with, even tangentially like, like Ethan was. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Arthur, according to Jeffrey, is the son of King Uther Pendragon uh, and the uh, and a woman named Lady Igerna. Or, a- uh, it, yeah. I, I love that name, by the way. Uther Pendragon. Yeah. No, I, I saw Jamie's light up. Uh, Jamie's eyes light up. Excuse me. As soon as uh, you said Uther Pendragon, I was like, "Oh, you like that one?" Yeah, that one's <laughs> cool. Uther is, is in WoW, so you got me. It's there. a WoW character. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I wasn't gonna mention it, but yeah. <laughs> and then Pendragon is cool because Ethan used to post on those forums way back when. So. Yeah, the Pendragon unofficial fan forums. But there was a yeah. series of books which I didn't read, uh, but they're like young adult um, fantasy books, basically. Uh, which the forum was actually about. It wasn't about King Arthur, I don't think. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah. I um, mean, yes. the Pendragon series might have been about King Arthur, but yeah. who knows? Uh, L- Lady Igerna was allegedly a like French n- uh, noblewoman, basically. Um, she was married to Uther's rival named uh, Gorlois, the Duke of Cornwall, um, <laughs> whom Uther went to war with because he wanted to fuck his wife so bad. So, like, I'm not sure if this is like better or worse than a modern war where like we send men and women to die for like Raytheon and OPEC, but like, <laughs> I guess like Dick Cheney at least isn't a cuck. So like, these guys went to war for a woman. Um, it's very much like. It's it's like Welsh Helen of Troy, but there's no 
I don't know, there's there's no like Saxon Paris or anything like that. It's just like straight up the king dragged his country into war because he wanted to bang somebody else's wife. I mean, Arthur would be Achilles, right? Like, um, Achilles didn't want to fuck Helen, did he? No, no, but Arthur, <laughs> like Uther wants to, so Uther's oh, Agamemnon, uh, yeah, yeah, who sorry, wants I mean, to go yeah, fuck, yeah. fuck Helen, or it's Agamemnon's brother who got cucked, I think. Uther, um, uh, Uther has it was, a full yeah. suit of armor, but just like the tiniest slats open on his heels. Like, <laughs> 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 which is funny. Speaking of the word cuck, that was also coined by Shakespeare in, um, in one, in one of his plays, which I can't, I can't remember which one, but it's like a guy ends up wearing deer antlers at the end and they call him a cu- the, the cuckold or something. Oh, like that. a midsummer, a midsummer night's hot wife is I believe yeah. the name of that. <laughs> I was <laughs> just going to go midnight summer's cuck. So yours was better. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Yeah. T- Titania or Titania was the original hot wife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, right. Anyway. Um, so, uh, uh, Gorlois and and Igerna lived in a place called Tintagel Castle, which is actually a real castle, which is currently owned by the future king of England, uh, which is Meghan Markle, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's Prince Charles. Well, I think I think is the future king of England after Elizabeth. He is, whatever. but he'll he'll probably abdicate, is what they say. Okay, yeah. After his Good. his mother sheds her shed, sheds her skin and. Uh, turns back into the cicada that uh, she probably is on the inside and flies off to Mars. Assuming she hasn't you, already. How do you so, guys yeah, know so true. much? Like, where, what part of your day are you, like, absorbing who's going to be the next queen of My wife's into the royals. She's uh, into, like... Uh, well, she's not into the royals. She's into the history of of the monarchy, essentially. Um, okay. So she knows that stuff. And her family her family is really into them, the royals, too. So A lot of English-speaking like Canadians are royalists. Like, I know um, uh, my buddy Kyle's mom... I mean, her her mother is from England. She's and so they're very much into it. So like a lot of English speaking Canadians, especially because she's still technically our monarch. Like some people are into that, like either as a curiosity or as like a wow. Like I'm. It's so nice that we still have a queen on our twenty and right. all of our coins, sort of thing. Right. Right. For all our American I, listeners, we don't like bow to the queen or anything. Like she's very much like a a mom who's 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 far away from her kids at this point. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah. I think it is very much like an Islam sort of thing. Like I pray to her twice a day. In the <laughs> <of England>. <laughs> <laughs> always, always pointing towards uh, mommy Mecca. Yeah. AKA, <laughs> yeah. Queen of England, yeah. Castle. Uh, <laughs> you pour um, a whole kettle of tea onto the ground and then just kneel in it and pray. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put, yeah. Dip your forehead into the liquid. Uh, yes. Or pour one out for mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, I looked so up. I looked up tit- yeah, Sorry. I looked. I looked up Titigel. It's extremely cool. Uh, it's yeah. basically like it's a ruin now, but it's like a castle that was sitting right on top of a cliff at like on like the end of this like jut out of rock into the sea. Essentially, cool. um, looks like super defensible, and it looks like a very cool place to visit these days. Uh, yeah. So the kind of uh, the 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 location of it and like how defensible it is is part of the actual story uh because uther had asked the wizard merlin who jeffrey had created by uh combining two other kind of like pagan whatever druids or whatever named mirrodin oh my god it's very welsh uh mirrodin willet and the aforementioned ambrosius aurelianus who is just like some guy that jeffrey of monmouth clearly liked because he used chunks of him in two different characters that he made up (laughs) Um, and he used it. He he asked Merlin to use magic to disguise Uther as Gorlois so that he could return home earlier than expected and sleep with Igerna and leave. Basically. Ah! So he had to use magic because he had like the the location of the castle is so defensible. There's like a quote from um, from the the writing that uh, I, I don't know which title it was under, but there's a quote from the writing where it was just like you could have an army of a thousand men and three guys with spears would be able to defend. Uh, Tintagel from them at all times and still win because of like these narrow rocky passages just on yeah. a face basically. It's There's wild. basically like one tiny little narrow land bridge and then you're yeah. going uphill towards the castle. Yeah. Yeah, but nothing can defend you from looking like exactly like your husband. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. fucked up. He's getting a, a Merlin to turn him into a, a copy of the husband so he can fuck the wife. 
Yeah, it's a very Zeus sort of thing, right? Okay. Where, but like, at least he's not a goose who just like kicks down the door, fucks the wife, and then like flies off into the night. Like, at least he transformed into a different guy. It's still what? assault. Maybe Paris <laughs> looked like a giant wooden horse, though, you know? So maybe this is still just the story of Troy. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but. I loved in the Sword in the Stone, I think it's from this, but Merlin fights with another, um, like, wizard, and their yeah. whole battle is just turning Madam each other... Mim. Yeah, they just turn each other into different yeah. animals. So, like, yeah. you're, a, you're a toad, then you're a frog, then now you're a mouse, and now you're a whatever, and like, oh, I'm a tiger polymorph, now. Polymorph, polymorph. Yeah, yeah. All they have is polymorph, though. It's, so, I guess they're, this they're doing like the They're doing, like, the Pokemon like uh damage type weapon weapon triangle essentially <laughs> yeah. where it's like turn you into a rock type because i'm right. a water type like oh, okay well i'm gonna turn you into a, a bug type then and yeah they're just going around in circles like that i never would have remembered the name of the witch uh that he fights but i watched clips of the of the movie to like get in the mood uh when i was writing the script here and her name is is mad 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 madam mim because cool. she's a crazy, she, she, like, she's just like a, like a swamp hag, basically. But yeah, she. How does they have it, a magic fight? How does it look though? Does like the animation and stuff still hold up to this day? Or, uh, I mean, not on like a modern screen, because uh, right. the the line work is real fucking rough. Like you can see like multiple passes with a pencil. Like visibly, everybody kind of has like a shaky outline because of the. Like just, I guess the eraser technology wasn't right. up to be up to 1080p standards in the 60s <laughs> yeah, yeah. or whatever, right? So I had a Lord of the Rings animated movie too. Actually, now that I think of it, oh, I, ha I have that as well. Yeah, yeah. that's um, Ralph Bash Bashke did that. That's a lot of rotoscope though. So that is a lot of yeah. live action actors that have been painted over. Cool. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um. So Merlin, on the subject of him, like transforming uh, a king into, it's just like, hey, uh, I. Hey, hello, uh, I'm King King of the Britons. I'd like to be a rapist, and I'd like to get away with it. Is there, do you have a spell for that? He's just like, absolutely. Yeah, sir. sure, no, sure. I don't, no, not no. a problem. Uh, Merlin, in some other writings, uh, is said to have used magic and giant laborers to build Stonehenge. So, like, this fucking megalith has been part of, like, ancient alien conspiracies for 900 years at this point. It's all just being recycled <laughs> fucking constantly. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, um, so we'll kind of learn more about this. Uh, what happen What happens after mommy and daddy get together? And how do you breed a king? And we're going to find out more about that after the break. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the ad, if you heard one, for their CPM. Uh, so now we can get back into a little bit more King Arthur. Clicks, clicks per minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh the Lore Boys podcast is a idle game actually. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I thought <laughs> it was how we get our clicks per minute actually. No, it isn't. <laughs> no. No, it's no, it's uh... Latin. It's something per milli. Oh. It, yeah, uh, it's, it's old Italian. Yeah. Okay, I play too many um, games. It's Krusty so... Pond man, I think. Is... <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. That's a Merlin will turn you into a crusty pond man so he can smash you with his Charizard or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, much of Jeffrey's writing, uh, Jeffrey of Monmouth, of course, was pretty straightforward. Um, like this is when this is when he introduced Arthur in 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 the Kings of Britain. Uh, a lot of his fiction basically was like really basic not too too crazy uh arthur was born and becomes king of england at 15 when his father's dies uh father dies of poisoning at the hands of the saxons mm. um and after Damn. adding ireland and norway to his like pile of countries arthur establishes the arthurian empire um and like when this is all happening is really unclear but like the battle of baden took place somewhere around 516 and 518 AD. So this is kind of like the historical period that Geoffrey posits like the Arthurian Empire being set up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after this, after the Battle of Baden, uh, there was 12 years of peace where uh, Merlin, create, Merlin created the famous Round Table um, and suggested that Arthur create a council of valiant knights to watch over the kingdom. Uh, famous ones include, we had mentioned Gawain, Lancelot, Bedivere, and Mordred uh, are some of the famous, the most famous kind of like chair holders of the, of the, uh, the round table. Do they use stools sure. or, or square chairs? I feel like you need to, uh, you should probably use stools, right? Because it's a round table, you want a round chair too. Yeah, <laughs> it would just it would just clash, yeah. or just like or just Ottomans, right? Just like a you nice could use those clutching. like maybe maybe every knight had one of those like rotating circular beds from the 70s 
you know? Oh, yeah. As I would spin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> King Arthur gets like, shaped like a heart, though. <laughs> yeah. They're just, like, laying on their side, propped up on their elbow, like, spinning in circles, like, dis- full armor. <laughs> discussing the Empire. Yeah, full, full plate armor for sure. <laughs> You've got, like, a long thought. You have to, like, stop talking when you're not facing thought. away. And then come back and continue your sentence as you come around again. <laughs> you can only deliberating s- at Camelot took ages. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. you can only speak between six and twelve or whatever the the rotation yeah, yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, three and nine maybe. Yeah. Three and nine. Yeah. Depends. Where I you're mean, as long as the, yeah. as long as the numbers are across from each other, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. It's true. Uh, so twelve years was far too much peace for Arthur, and he decided to further expand his empire, uh, coming into conflict and defeating the Roman Emperor Lucius Tiberius in Gaul, which is now kind of the France-Belgium area of Europe. Um, In previous decades, uh, Arthur had fought off, like, many monsters from British folklore, like giants, cat people, and people with dog heads for some reason, which are just straight up called dog heads. And uh, I like the, the, the old kind of medieval art that is... Almost incomprehensible. It's like even adults look like they look like drew like children, which is just like some like mud farming peasant that just has a dog's head, basically. <laughs> probably drew like children because they don't live much past being a child back then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the Roman emperor that I mentioned before, Lucius Tiberius, is completely made up. Not a real person whatsoever. Not even a fusion. Just fake. From just you know, cradle made to up grave. To Arthur to kill. <laughs> yeah, cr- cradle to grave, not real. Nothing, nothing was true about Lucius. Uh, Lucius Tiberius Pop- popped in, popped into existence to see an opportunity and go for it, just to be fucking struck down by Arthur. Yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> uh, so before marching on Rome itself, after defeating defeating Tiberius uh, in Gaul, uh, Arthur caught wind that his nephew Mordred had married his wife Guinevere and taken control of Britain. So he nice. turns that army right the hell around and like as if the kids were misbehaving in the back and marches mm-hmm. it back to England. I mean, from what you just said, the kids were misbehaving in the back, right? So his nephew was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, a Arthur, of, killed- a lot of cucking, a lot of cuckolding in this yeah. uh, in this one yeah. in the Arthurian yeah. legend. <laughs> <laughs> King Arthur, the fucking cuck story. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude. Uh, a tale a tale of two cucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just all adapted from this. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just like was listening to the Always Sunny podcast and Charlie had this really good bit about like Christianity when they first started. It's like, and you'll be like all together like brothers and you'll take care of each other. And like everyone's like, yeah. And it's like, oh, and we're going to go to heaven. And that's awesome. And everyone's like, yeah. And it's like, and no one's allowed to have sex anymore. And everyone's like, wait, wait what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how did they Is sell that point? Can you not <laughs> fuck on a romantic cloud in heaven? I think um, I think while you're alive, you can only have sex for the purpose of having the childs. The children. Well, that makes sense, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, only to have children or disguised as another man have children with his wife. When you yeah, live exactly. to 30, like, everybody's probably fucking and cucking all over the place, dude. Because, like, <laughs> you just... <laughs> We're here for a good time, not a long time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of short-lived, uh, Arthur kills his nephew, who is, who is like, a younger man. Uh, he kills his nephew on the banks of the river, for real, Camblam in Cornwall, which made Whoa. me laugh. Oh, Black Betty. Cam 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 Blam. Blam. <laughs> I mean, it'd be like Black Nighty, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Black Nighty. Cam Blam. Cam Blam. <laughs> uh, that's in Cornwall, but Arthur uh, Arthur is mortally wounded in the process. Uh, he hands his crown to one of his knights, who is cousin Constantine, uh, and is then taken to the island called Avalon, never to be seen again. So he doesn't really die in this old version. He just disappears to the island, Isle of Avalon uh, and is never seen again. I met a girl once named Avalon uh, at a bar, fuck, like, I guess 13 years ago at this point. I was like 18, sure. 19, but I, I kind of always, I always like remembered her because that name was so unique. And this isn't like somebody I ever like dated or anything. It's just like, oh, what a cool name. For, you're just going to live rent free in my head forever now, apparently. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Still coming up. Yeah. I know an internet Avalon. <laughs> I met a, a an Aphrodite the other day. That's hot. She was working at a chocolate store. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's even hotter. <laughs> <Holy fuck. laughs> yeah. Doing Christmas well, shopping. It's a really interesting yeah. name. Yeah. 
Man, if she's if, like, if, if she's just if, like working at chocolate, like getting fondue and like cinnamon scented candles, that that chick is fetish material, dude. <laughs> yeah, so fondue would make sense if it was hotter as a chocolate store, but also like hot fudge, I guess. But yeah, nah. otherwise it's just gonna get so melty if it's hotter in a chocolate store. That's true. Not yeah. very, not very <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. What's the melting point? Of, it's probably just above room temperature, right? Like, you can, there's not a lot of it melts in your hand, right? Of yeah. what? Not in your mouth. Uh, melts in your mouth, not in your hand. No, that's the M and M's, dude. They yeah. fucked up the green M M&M. and M. They took away her boots. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love that meme right now. Of course, we're recording this in advance, obviously, so this might not be relevant. I love the fact that it's just like, oh, <laughs> the, like the head size is like they made the green M M&M and M into a dumpy slut, and it's just like, oh yeah, they're also being investigated for child slavery. Yeah, it's I, like, I, I, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, oh, Mar- that's, Mars that's, that's not a meme. Like Mars, Nestle, and some other candy corporation are like allegedly use like child slavery in South America, and they're, like I mean, they're like in court right now for like for this case, and they're just like uh the m ms are inclusive it's just like oh yeah it's like quickly yeah. quickly post something on twitter exactly yeah create a scandal like it, it's not so not so meme to say but like you basically can't buy chocolate that wasn't at some yeah. point produced by a child slave and like it, that, that applies to like a lot of things like a lot of it's really hard to find actually like fair trade coffee even the ones like labeled fair trade are like they're usually say like yeah we got it from this guy who we trust but all the people that came before him, we don't know, and there's no way to trace it. And so, like, yeah, problem when like, one company owns everything. I think Video Babes yeah. is going in that direction too. Microsoft <laughs> buying Activision, yeah, the big, Bobby uh, big... Kotick slaves are going to be making the next World of Warcraft or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, but there's also the problem like with like Microsoft is from Bill Gates, who remember his like post arrest for pedophilia friendship with Jeffrey Epstein just ruined his marriage, right? Yeah. So like, it's like okay, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is all fucked up. It's, it's all shit and bad all the time. And like Nestle Sorry. for Nestle could just fix like the Fl- Flint, Michigan still having water problems. And for like what to Nestle would be the equivalent of like buying a cup of coffee in the morning could just fix the problem forever. Yeah. For them. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy. For, for less than the price of a cup of coffee, you can help one adult American man in Flint, Michigan. It's like, <laughs> like that commercial. That commercial starts coming up around Christmas in time. The arms <laughs> of an angel. It's a guy in like a a corn t shirt, just like sitting with yes. a brown cup of water. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. Send my UNICEF pennies to Dwayne Smith in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> it's still fucked up. That's been going on for years, though. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was quite the hell of a left turn right there. Yeah. But um, the Arthurian legends got really, really popular. Uh, kind of after Mo- Jeffrey of Monmouth died, uh, it, all over Europe. Uh, like obviously just among people who could like read and write. And other versions of like Arthurian fan fiction was created, and people would just keep embellishing and adding shit to the story. Um, Arthur, for a very strange reason at this time, I guess, became really popular in France. Uh, but, like, the French and the English were mortal enemies historically for centuries up until, like, Europe, Europe needed, like, a proper kind of modern, in quotes, economy, right? Yeah, like, until World War Two, basically. Like, they weren't yeah. they weren't on the same side in World War I, right? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so new elements were added to the Arthurian legends and characters were modified. Uh, in Geoffrey's writings, uh, Arthur's home base was in, uh, I think it's Caerleon. Oh, which is in Wales. It's However, Carolina. by the end of the in North Carolina, <laughs> yeah. he just eats a bunch. He eats, he eats a bunch of imitation crab meat on the beach or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's in uh, Caerleon. Uh, but in the 12th century, the French were already talking about even cooler places located somewhere in Britain, uh, and this cooler place was eventually Camelot. Uh, so Camelot was made up by the French. Okay. Oh, cool. Um, like those cheeky Frenchmen and all subsequent Arthurian fanfic writers uh, eventually confirmed the location of Arthur's home base. So like somebody had suggested that he lives at Camelot and then it just kind of like very much like kind of like an SCP. It's just like enough people were just like, yeah, that's just like true for yeah. the story now. So now like you just use Camelot as his as his home base. You mentioned yeah, it earlier. I had that thought. I was like, okay, in a thousand years, is there going to be a Bible that just said the SCPs were real? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Arthur, Arthur became collaborative fiction over the centuries, basically, which is pretty yeah. neat. Which is like, yeah. again, like, uh, like with a lot of conspiracies or with SCPs, like, people love just working together and making shit up. 
Yeah, it's true. Right. Making cool shit. Uh, yeah. Um, this this actually fuels tourism now because there's a bunch of like ruins in England that like some tourism company that owns the land is just like no, this is the real Camelot. This is Camelot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. This one. Let's go. <laughs> we can prove it because there's a sword and a stone over there. Okay. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> huh? But didn't Arthur uh, take the sword out of the stone? Shut up. You're banned. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and like the stone is like perfectly rectangular. Like they poured uh, the concrete. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like that that like uh, that rebar ring at the top that you can use to like hook a crane into to transport yeah, it. It's yeah, like yeah. Oh, it's authentic. It's from the it's from the sixth century. Yeah. <laughs> stamped on the back, you just can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Made in China, like just stamped yeah. on the back of it. Ar- Arthur and Co. Masonry Company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1961. Like I don't think this is old enough. <laughs> yeah. Um Camelot becomes the site of the most recognizable parts of Arthurian lore at this point. Uh, it's where he and Guinevere are married. Uh, it's where the him and all of his knights he and the lads all have like a shared psychosis and vow to track down the holy grail Uh, and where galahad is honored when he is seated in the siege perilous uh which is a chair reserved by merlin for the knight that finds the holy grail Uh, a spell had been placed on this chair Uh, this is why it's the perilous seat uh it would kill anybody who wasn't qualified for it damn yeah but he, he was he's pure Para- Galahad, Galahad the Pure, he found the Holy Grail, and that's what that chair was for. Parades p- p- nuts. <laughs> nice. S- s- sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> um, Arthur carried with him throughout the years a lot of magical gear. Uh, he had a dagger called Carnwenon. Um, uh, oh yeah, I remember loving this word. A spear named the Rongminiad, which is a lot of fun to say, <laughs> and a Rongminiad. shield at one point named Pridwin. Uh, though most post Jeffrey adaptations would name Arthur's ship the Pridwin, uh, while his shield was the completely unpronounceable Welsh word. Oh my fucking god, Winneb Berwick Thuker, which I will put in chat if you guys oh, want Winneb Berwick Thuker. <laughs> if you want to take a stab at this. All right, all right. Oh, God. Uh, more W's than I expected. Yeah, <laughs> more B, G, W, R, T, H's than I expected. <laughs> yeah, you don't get that that a lot, huh? Wineb, gwer, Wineb Gerthuker. Yeah. Wineb Gerthuker. So, I'll just call it Winnie the Shield. Yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, Winnie I, the Pooh, uh, a public domain figure now. Uh, dates back to uh, Arthurian the legend. Century. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you don't She's put a red a shirt on. bear strapped to his arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a plush. Um, in, this is kind of like a lot of the Arthurian stuff is carried obviously into modern stuff, but in Fallout 4, the Brotherhood of Steel's uh, Zeppelin is called the Pridwin. So it's named after oh. Arthur's uh, ship as well. Oh, cool. Uh, arguably, the most famous aspect of Arthurian legend uh, would be his sword Excalibur. So this is all the like this is this is those were all his like practice weapons. The the Rongo Rongo Miniad and the Wignabun Thuker were all just like <laughs> no, that's that's rookie shit. We got to get to the real stuff now. Um, it was included in Geoffrey of Monmouth's writings. However, at this time, it was called Caliburnus uh, in Old Italian. So okay. Ex- Caliburnus eventually became Excalibur. Excalibur. Uh, Later people had to try Excaliburnus, yeah. Um, Excalibur. Later people had... Sorry, it sounded like a, a wizard thing. <laughs> it yeah. does, yeah. yeah. Uh, later people had to try to explain how Arthur came by his legendary sword, because I guess a king owning a sword was just not believable. After after you read the story enough times, you start asking fucking questions. Oh, right? yeah. and he does the Joker thing. Like, uh, you want to know how I got these scars? There's a lady in a yeah. lake. Or uh, I pulled yeah. it out of a stone. Or you just... Yeah, yeah, Enough, yeah. baby! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the, the first the first explanation um, is fairly fanciful, and it's again for some reason was added by the French, like the most legendary English king of all time. Most of the stuff we know about now was added by like French fanboys who just thought this stuff was really cool. Yep. <laughs> well, retcon uh, is a uh, portmanteau for uh, the French people changing English history. Yeah, yeah exactly. retcon is yeah, it's, it's like a fiefdom in France. Yeah. <laughs> retcon. Ah yes, yes, it's like ah yes, uh, no, I grew up in the in retcon. Actually, uh, we uh, mostly just rewrote English books. <laughs> um, so this was added. Uh, the the first kind of Excalibur 
uh, thing here, which is the sword and the stone, was added by the French poet uh, Robert of Boron, or Robert of Boron, um, where he, that's where he added the sword and the stone uh, storyline. This was around the year 1200. Uh, again, no real dates. Nobody, you know, th there, there's no, there's no SCP wiki where it's like article created in 2006, we just have to be like, yeah, uh, article created 1280 ish, right? Ish, By yeah. Robert of Boron. G give or take uh, 100 years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Either> exactly. <direction. laughs> uh, the summary of this uh, legend is really, really, really similar to the Disney film. Uh, teenage Arthur, who no one knows is a true king of England or even like the son of Uther Pendragon, is a squire to Sir Kay, who is his like grumpy stepbrother in the Disney film. And he pulls the sword out of an anvil that is on a stone sitting in a church courtyard. So even <laughs> the original like Robert of Boron version, the sword and the stone is really a sword and an anvil on a stone. So it has been you know, inconsistent now for 800 years. <laughs> on a bump and a log and a hole in the bottom of the sea. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Kay, who is his stepbrother in this one, uh, shares a name with one of Arthur's knights from older versions of the story. So the the Disney movie... Um, well, oh, excuse me. Yeah, that's, sorry, I was reading ahead there. So, like, they took even older names and just kind of reworked these characters for newer stories. Okay. Um, in the Disney film, it is never specified, I don't believe, that the actual pulling of the sword takes place on Christmas Eve. But in the movie, it's snowy. But, again, like, in the poem or the in, in this version here, Christmas Eve, church courtyard, very Christian, obviously, where you're, like, divinely ordained to be king of all England. And, obviously, it takes place on Christmas Eve right before, you know, king of the christians yeah. the king of the christians birthday and yeah. the sword looks like a cross this, this is so funny because like arthur was was arthur a christian like of the of those pairs of threes was he in the the christian yeah. category not the pagan yeah. category hmm. yeah because like native england native anglos and the saxons would have definitely been pagans pagans and like yeah. the romans sure would have been catholics and there, there, like, there was no other Christianity. There was just the Catholics at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, again, it was three pagans, three Jews, three Christians in the uh, the nine worthies. Yeah, he like I, I just don't see a world where Arthur would have been a Christian. Like, he would have been a pagan, right? Like, if he grew up natively on Britain. Like, listen, don't qu don't question the fucking science, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the French retconned it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the nine worthies carving was carved is from the 13th century, I think I said. So it's even after the it's even after the Excalibur legend was minted, basically. Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, the 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 retcon area of France was hard at work for another hundred years when they were just like, oh, he was a Christian. Don't worry. Him and Charlemagne yeah. just yeah. thick as thieves. They was <laughs> big, big Catholics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, during the Sword in the Stone arc. Basically, no one believes that the feeble little 15-year-old boy actually pulled the sword. So the sword is reinserted back into the slot in the anvil. And a bunch of other nobles and knights try to pull it. They all fail, obviously. Uh, and then the young Arthur then effortlessly withdraws it a second time and ascends to the throne of England. Um, all of this had been also foretold by the crackpot wizard Merlin, who is again included in this version of the story. So this is retconning the Arthurian legend. Which we're saying, if he was at the Battle of Baden as an adult around 500 AD, yeah, we're saying the throne of England in four, like 450 AD ish, 470 AD ish. Um, who was the first king of England, and like when was that? It's 1066, right? Uh, 1066, I think, is like Alfred the Great unifies like uh, Northumbria and and Saxony and all this shit, like. Like, okay, yeah, I guess I'm just confused what throne we're taught. Like, what throne was he given at this point? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, it, Alfred it, the Great is in 866. Okay. Apparently. What's 1066? 1066 was when all the dragons got driven out or something. All the pen dragons. Uh, that's... that's William the Conqueror. That's William the First. That's when okay. the Nor the Normans uh, took over the, the throne, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I bet Forrest Gump wasn't even good at ping pong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> King Arthur was terrible at ping pong. Yeah. 
<laughs> but he did love Dr. Pepper, which was retconned in in the 1960s. How do you guys oh. know when the first King of England and stuff is, man? Like, I, I, don't, I have no way to absorb that information in my life. And you guys have an idea of it. I, I watched The Last Kingdom on Netflix, and Alfred's was central character the first few seasons. And that, that is in the ninth century. Huh. Um, and then cool. sometimes when I watch, like, historical fiction, I'll, like, Google spoilers just to see, like, where the season's going to go. So... I'm just like, oh, I wonder if this guy is real and what he actually did or and shit like that. So yeah, yeah. I'll. Uh, I mean, Ariane and I watch a lot of like just like historical documentaries, like just like, hey, yeah. here's like you know what we know about the the kings of England. Anything yeah. about it, before the 1900s, like I couldn't guess Gone. within a hundred years. <laughs> like, yeah, right. the Renaissance. Give me, give me within a hundred years. 1750. That's probably think, within a hundred. I, I thought the Renaissance was in like the fourteen hundreds because I, like, I think it's like fourteen to seven. Yeah, fourteen to seventeen centuries. So yeah, okay. you're, you're close enough. You're like hundred fifty off, maybe. But we have a Renaissance man right here, smack dab in the middle. Thankfully, uh, <laughs> Thomas Thomas Mallory uh, in the fifteenth century. Uh, he had uh, extra stories where he was talking about Excalibur. Um, it, this version of Excalibur, which was withdrawn from the anvil on the stone, would be broken in battle against King Pelinor, which is king of Listenoise or Listenois, which is Listenoise. a Listenoise. Like, like a DJ pump up, <laughs> like Pelinor, Pelinor Listenoise. It's yeah. actually a <laughs> mixture. DJ. It's mayonnaise that helps you clean your teeth. Oh, nice. uh, <laughs> yeah. no, no, I, I, I got the the the, the uh, alcohol free listenase because the, it, it burns my tongue too much. Uh. <laughs> um, if, if if the Pelinor of Listenoise was a real person and with a real kingdom, it would be like maybe in the northwest of England somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Again, kind of made up. Uh, during the fight uh, with uh, Pelinor, Merlin saves Arthur using magic. However, Arthur uh, like had admired Pelinor's skills and invites him to eventually join him at the round table. Um, a king can't not have a magic sword, and Merlin thankfully knows a couple of women who can help him out. Uh, okay. Merlin leads Arthur to a lake somewhere in England uh, where he encounters one of allegedly many ladies of the lake, um, and this one is sometimes called Morgan. Although in like earlier um, earlier versions of the Arthurian legend, Morgan Le Fay is actually his half sister, who is also sometimes a fairy, uh, depending on who you ask. The Fay, I mean, <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Arthur Morgan, Red Dead uh, Redemption lore confirmed. Oh damn, <laughs> yes. dude, that's a good Ar one, actually. Already, yeah. already, R two is just the tale of King Arthur in, yeah. in a western, in a spaghetti western setting. <laughs> yeah, in the eighteen nineties, <laughs> he pulls two revolvers from a stone, like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> from an animal. Yep, on top of a stone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it, it, so anyway, so the, those are some of the dates. This is like Arthur Morgan sometimes, or Arthur Morgan Le Fay, because uh, he's a fairy in in Red Dead, right? Because that's a fantasy game. Of course. Yeah, right. of course. Um, so often she's just simply referred to as the Lady of the Lake, uh, but most fiction like recognizes that there are like a bunch of magical women living in British lakes all over the island that like to make deals. Sometimes they're kind of Faustian deals. Sometimes they're just regular like blessings and whatnot with a bunch of people, uh, a bunch of mortals, rather. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, however, grants uh, Arthur a new Excalibur with a magical scabbard. Uh, some tellings have Arthur like tossing his broken sword into the lake only to have it be like caught by the last second by a woman's hand like rising out of the water. Cool. Um, she gives Arthur his new sword in exchange for a favor that she would come and get at some point. So this one's not so much Faustian, but she's like, look, I'm going to come back for payment. And uh, there's like a very strange uh, Lady of the Lake scene in, again, the, the the Green Knight film that I that recently came out that I had mentioned. Okay. Um, right. So uh, the favor that she asks here comes in the form of a request to have Arthur kill Sir Balin or Balin. Balin, B A Balin again. He's another DJ basically that's yeah. competing with her. <laughs> Balin, <put the> <laughs> um, we, Sir Balin is one of the knights in his court who has allegedly killed the brother of this lady of the lake. Uh, when she arrives to ask for Balin's head, Sir Balin is like, Whoa, hey, fuck you. I'm so innocent. I'll cut your head off. How's that for irony? And then does that. So he kills the lady of the lake. 
Oh, no. Um, and as punishment well, and for And Arthur's doing... like, well, there goes my debt, baby. <laughs> Ex- exactly. He was like, I was going to declare bankruptcy last next week, but uh, thanks, dude. <laughs> anyway, uh, for taking care of that. Uh, but Arthur, of course, is like very noble. He's a hero. He's just like, oh, no, I was going to try and bargain or whatever. I owe her for this magic sword and scabbard that I have. Yeah. She, she helped me defend my right to be king of England and uh, abuse the poor. Yeah, exactly. I, I must repay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, madam. Um, as punishment for decapitating the Lady of the Lake, Arthur banishes Balin from court. Um, he actually has like a very interesting series of misadventures involving like his own cursed sword, the Lance of Longinus, which was like the lance that had stabbed Jesus in the ribs, uh, oh, and okay. also like had a battle with the King of Ireland at some point. But like Balin is his, his own kind of like medieval legend it's a kind of like part of arthurian myth right but it's very much a uh meanwhile the, the king of england or the king of ireland basically like it's a side story yeah um arthur does not actually suffer seemingly at least in um in in what, what did i say his name was tim mallory in in thomas mallory rather in this story he doesn't have any repercussions for like not paying back his debt like sir Balin just kills the lady of the lake and that's kind of the end of it he's like well well that takes care of that like he doesn't even Um, kill him back he's just like dude okay don't hang out at my house anymore all right like go on like doesn't doesn't banish him from the kingdom just banishes him from the court like it's just like yeah dude he banishes him yeah and then he goes on a series of adventures like i didn't look too too much into uh balan himself because again it's a side story but yeah, it's he was, very much. He was like, gonna kill him, and then God, the the most executive producer, was like, "No, no, we're gonna make a spinoff series with him. You can't kill him." So. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely, yeah. The most executive producer. <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever been called that? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> he has now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So uh, there's no repercussions for not paying off his debt for Excalibur. However, uh, in Mallory's version, it actually has the same ending. Um. Arthur still uh, gets into a fight with Mordred and is taken to Avalon at this time. Uh, but this, uh, like, to live out the rest of his days wounded on on Avalon, he's taken there by his sister Morgan and another lake spirit named Nimue, or Nimu, N-I-M-U-E, uh, who is another name that one of the many ladies of the lake has. Nimue. Oh, that's yeah. okay. So now we're, we're getting finding Nemo lore, too, in here. <laughs> yes. Or, or that could be, could that be the... Mad, 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 madam, uh, Nim, was it? She was, she was Mim, M-I-M. Oh, Mim, not Nim. Yeah, yeah. Not uh, Nim, yeah. The Secret of Nim is an animated, uh, film about mice, so maybe that. Maybe she's a mouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I only watched uh, The Secret would... of Nymphs. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Uh, that would conclude, however, the basics on King Arthur and like kind of the most popular stuff where it came from and like all the, the kind of like most... I don't know the, the people that we can confirm added extra things to the story. So that would be, that would be that. Um, nice. I have been your host, Peter O'Donoghue. You can find me at Lore Boys Podcast on Instagram, uh, or uh, hang it out on the Discord again, loreboys.com/slash/about. Find the link, or the link is in your podcast app right now in the description of this episode. Um, thank you yeah. for listening. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, if you guys want to get in touch with us, like Pete says, Discord's the best way to do it. Uh, if you guys want to uh, send us some cash, Patreon's the best way to do it. Um, Patreon.com slash the lore boys. We have a couple uh, different tiers there set up with a couple different reward schemes. We're always looking for ways to improve it as well. If you guys have any ideas, feel free to send them our way. No guarantee we'll do them. Uh, but time permitting, we do want to kind of flesh it out uh, a little bit better for everyone involved. Um, that said, a little bit of housekeeping. We did get a request from one of our patrons, uh, Nathan, as he spells it. Wallerowerowerowerowich. Uh, <laughs> also <laughs> called Shield yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. oh, also known as uh, Sketchy Jesus on the Discord. I uh, wanted to say, hey boys, it's that guy with the dumb Polish last name. Hi, Lord Priest <laughs> Sketchy Jesus. Back again with another shout out for you. Really just wanted to thank you guys for the previous shout out. It meant a lot. And I wanted to let you know that I'm currently in the market for a Dungeons and Dragons pinball machine. So any inquiries inquiries please contact me at ratfuck at go dick uh, in all serious in all seriousness though you guys have helped me get through a real difficult month of my life mental health wise and the laughs you guys have brought me have kept me in high spirits y- y'all had me dying listening to your i have no mouth and must scream episode and my new favorite quote from you guys is yeah so the gay monkey man with the 12 inch steak and cheese was not gonna fucking fly and i do not remember that at all <laughs> i do i do remember that i remember <laughs> i remember 
steak and cheese. Like I, that, I remember that bit. I don't remember who the gay monkey man from. Uh, I have no math. I'm a, I must scream this. But uh, uh, anyway, you guys are great. Please keep doing what you guys are doing and stay awesome. Love Nathan. I looked up a Dungeons and Dragons pinball machine, and they're you can get one for two thousand five hundred dollars, which in the vintage pinball machine market, not so bad. Some of the ten k plus, yeah. So uh, you might have gotten a good one there. Map it up, yeah. Oh. Uh, thanks for the shout out. Sorry, it's a month and a and change late, uh, maybe two. Whenever this episode actually drops, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you guys want to uh, send us a message to read on air, uh, it's one of our Patreon rewards. So uh, feel free to check out our Patreon and uh, the rewards you get there for supporting the show financially. <laughs> Yeah, um, and there are uh, there. I made some changes recently, so if you are already a patron, please review uh, what you've paid for and uh, harass us for it. Basically, yeah. guys, I got a good idea. We should do a, a Twitch stream of like a game that we really like, just as like is torture, like maybe like League of Legends, because like after a while you just get so tired of it. And anytime someone donates, you have to add like another hour on the clock, so they can uh, just keep us playing League of Legends for like a week straight. And it would suck, <laughs> but we'd make money. So, and then we can put it back into the podcast. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I, I, come uh, at me for more capitalist ideas later. I got yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're spitballing ideas there. We're spitballing ideas over at uh, Lore Boys Prime, of course, as always. Um, and we are, uh, as many of the patrons already know, um, the Lore Boys Prime patrons, I should say, not the Patreon patrons, but the Lore Boys Prime patrons should already know. Uh, we are creating, well, so we were going to create a round table. Um, we were going to be knighting some uh, Prime members who fit the criteria of what we need. Obviously, uh, I'm going to be the cute knight at, at the round table. Uh, I'll, I'll probably also wear the hat of the funny knight, I think, uh, is fair to say. Um, <laughs> but uh, there, there was a little bit of tension between us. You know, uh, I, I kind of view myself as an Arthur figure, but Pete kind of views himself as an Arthur figure, and Jamie kind of viewed himself as an Arthur figure. So uh, I think what we've decided on is to do like a, a three-circle Venn diagram table, essentially. <laughs> uh, and uh, so there's going to be overlap. If you if you fit, uh, if one category matches both of the Lore Boys tables, you can sit at both at the same time, or even all three, if all three of us agree on one category. Um, I know I need a, a, a blank, insert your name here, the rat tamer. I need somebody to work on on taming rats, basically, uh, uh, you know, sewer pipe piper, essentially. Pie, okay. pie piper-esque figure at my uh, round table. Sounds good. I, I'm sorry, Peter got up, and I know I shouldn't say anything, but I love the way that he used his hands to run. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, was fast so, running. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know what's, what happened to Peter. He had Maybe he's still I, running. Somebody must Somebody must have knocked on his door, right? No, he's I, just. I think he's so, running to get to the table that we're both sitting at now. He's coming. To oh, join us, okay, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, if you guys want to apply to to join our, our Knights of the Round Table, make sure to to hit us up with your uh, knightly name and what you bring to the uh, round Venn diagram table. Uh, and I think that would constitute <laughs> two little... two more boys out of three. <laughs> uh, Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, my favorite scat man, um, John, fact is that he died in 1999. What? Yeah. Scatman's dead? He's dead. Oh my God. I didn't know. I barely my knew him. Peter. Uh, I'm going to uh, pour one out for the Crothers. Uh, yeah. uh, my name's Ethan. Scatman's dead. Scatman's dead. The Scatman's dead. He 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 sk skibbity bopped his last bot up. A, <laughs> did you know he actually had a stutter too, and he was like celebrated in the stuttering community? Yes, we talked about this like two days ago. I know, but <laughs> come on, guys. We're, we're doing a show. We gotta pretend. Yeah. Oh, oh, fake oh, yes. magic. Yeah, that's true. It's like no, we never talk outside of work. <laughs> <laughs>